So to create that detail at the bottom, of course, there are many ways you could do it. Like with anything in Blender, you could do it so many different ways. But the way that I found that I like to do it was by adding in a circle with a bunch of geometry. So we're going to use maybe like 128 vertices to create this, which you can see that it got smoother, but you can't see those vertices until you go into edit mode by pressing tab, which is where you should be doing all your this type changes and i'm just gonna put this like right like there i guess maybe i should bring it down a little bit so it's kind of sitting right on the plane bring it down a little bit and this is another thing like depending on the wine bottle you're using as a reference it always looks a little bit different but the one i like is what we're gonna do because it's my freaking tutorial so i'm just moving that up and then press E and scale it out, and then just move that down. That's kind of where they sit. It's just kind of like on the edge like that. So that is all good. Um, I'm just actually gonna press G and Z. And oh, that's way too much. I'm gonna just like, I wanna be able to see it better. Maybe I can hide this. Let's just, for now, I know we better not do that. Let's just move it up a little bit. It doesn't need to be snapped perfectly. I'm just gonna move it up so we can see what we're doing. And then what I'll do next, I think what I did was I'm going to press, hmm, how did I do this? I've done it, as a, a, like I said, lots of different ways you can do it. And I never remember which way I thought was the best. But I think what I want to do is select these edges and then press Shift G, which will bring up a select similar menu. Now it will allow me to select a similar length, which is going to get everything. But if I turn this threshold down, it will create a more exact selection. So I had those two selected and it, it wants something that's exactly the length of those two edges. So it's not going to be that. It's not going to be that. And it's not going to be that all the way around. So that was a way to just select all those rings and this is where i'm talking about this is like slightly more advanced because um but this is again you know i was talking about earlier how important uh, being able to select things in blender is and there's so many tools for selection and um, and really the better you are with them the more time you'll save yourself so i'm going to press now Control b to bevel each of those which you can see that that is what that's doing um, if you scroll up or down it's going to add geometry but we're going to be deleting this so uh, we just need it to be the one. Um, so get it something like that. This is basically going to be the space between each of those little bumps. So I'm going to do something like that. And then with them all still selected, press X and delete those faces. So now we have this little thingamajig going on, which looks great, sort of. Um, but it needs to, I think what I liked to do was add a solidify to give it some actual geometry now. And we can have it be something like that, ooh, ooh, something like that. And then I'm going to add a subdivision surface to smooth it out. And I'm going to end up joining this, I think, with the other object. So I'll end up applying the solidify, and then it will share a subdivision with this model. So it'll actually be up to three. And then I'm going to, which is why I'm making it so it's just these two planes because there's so many of them and it's going to get subdivided so many times. I don't want to overdo it with geometry on the bottom, but this really is kind of um, a detail that you don't necessarily need. So Alt Z to go ahead and grab any of these edges, and then I'm going to do the same thing Shift G and select similar length, which will get that. Which, you know, this is almost exactly the same, and I bet if we turned up the threshold, it would grab those other ones actually grabs them at the same time because they're like similarly this one would be larger i don't know it doesn't matter we just need these ones and then i'm going to press r and if you do it this way it's going to do it in the the view you're looking which that's pretty dope but that's not what we're here to do today derek press r and z and just create a little bit of a little bit of a twisted twisty there and that brings us down into place holding shift and that looks decent Something like that. Looks like maybe I want to bring the middle up a little bit. So that's what I still have selected. So I'm just going to bring that up a teeny tad like that. And then 
like I've done in the past, I'm going to press Shift D and move this to the trash collection in case I need to go back and make some changes. Don't have to repeat all those steps. And yes, so that will be good. Now I'm going to apply that solidify modifier and then I'm just going to, you know, I could delete the subdivision or leave it on. It doesn't really matter. Um, when I join it to this object, it will pick up the modifiers that that object has. So uh, selecting this and then selecting this and then control J and it will um, join those objects together. And now uh, that bottom object that I created has the uh, subdivision surface modifier that the wine bottle itself had. So we're all good. We may never see that, but if you do, the details there, good for you. You are super pro modeler, deserving of many, many freelance dollars. Um, now, another thing you could do that you're probably not going to see is like add some edge rings and then bevel them and then just kind of like scale things in and out a little bit. Just kind of create some a little bit more like variety down there. I feel like when you look at the punt, there's always some well, there's kind of some ridges, so that might look nice. Also pointless, but might look nice. And this this little thing is really bothering me. A little spiky, spiky. Let's uh, how can we get rid of that? We could like we could just delete that face, and then maybe we could use our we could grid fill it. Maybe that would make it look better. Let's search F3 grid fill which will fill it with a different type of geometry. Ooh. <laughs> We're going to control Z that guy. Um, I guess if I just moved it down a little more, it wouldn't look as obvious. I don't know. Let's just leave it. We're not going to see that. This is one of those things dealing with circles. I could control B to bevel it. I'm just kind of smooth it out a little bit <laughs> now it's just now it's just tinier that's okay we'll leave it so i think we're pretty much all set on modeling last thing i'll do to wrap this up is um, just create a you know we could probably apply the curve wouldn't be a bad idea maybe let's just let's just trash collection it up shift now when you duplicate an object with another object that it like references, the new object will reference the new object. So shift D, let's bring that on the Y axis. Now I have two curves in my scene. This is wrapper curve 001 and this is wrapper curve regular. Still hasn't produced any music as far as I'm aware. I mean, how long has he been a rapper now? She even? Who knows? Um, now it is linked with that. So we're going to move those to our trash collection. And I haven't done this before, so it's probably gonna mess me up later down the line in the tutorial, but I'm gonna apply that curve just so I don't have this object to mess with. So I'm gonna delete that curve. And yeah, we should be all set unless we need to make any changes, in which case we're totally screwed. And now is when I'll check that that's flush, even though I should have done that before. It's okay, it looks good. So we got our foil label and our bottle with our nice, nice detail. What happened down here? Why does that look a little bit different? Is that because I screwed with the darn? Is that because I screwed with the darn edge loops down here? Select similar area, G, Z. Bring those guys back up a little bit. Thank you. Please stay. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, press Shift A, add an empty. We'll make that empty a cube. And it's huge. Call that huge the cube. And then I'm just gonna bring it up to a nice centered-ish location about which I might want to make some rotations and things. I'm going to select my label, shift click my bottle, shift click my foil, and then lastly shift click my empty, and then press control P and parent to object. Keep transform. Now I'm going to need to move around this bottle and reposition it. I can just move this one empty instead of having to select all those objects, which now up here in our collections, it looks like they all disappeared, but they're just nested under the empty, which I can call bottle controller. Enter. Looking snazzy, but now we have a bottle, bottle controller. So that's all fine and dandy for modeling. We've got ourselves a wine bottle. Hope it didn't take us too long. Probably did, but um, yeah, it was uh, it was fun. So. 
Hopefully you're enjoying things so far. Again, if you're watching on Teachable for the first time, thank you. I'm kind of splitting these up into sections a little bit more than I normally would, uh, but I think it's good for you. It's good for me. It helps organize things a little bit better. Uh, and of course, if you're watching on Teachable, you can see where you left off, uh, but I will, of course, try to add the chapters and things like that on YouTube as well. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move into the next section, which is going to be setting up some lighting, more advanced materials, and things of that nature. Thanks for being here. I'll see you there.